Welcome to Sweet Talk. This broadcast is brought to you by the Continuing Education Workforce Training Division of Idaho State University's College of Technology. This podcast is part of our continuing outreach efforts and the format is conversational. We will be having conversations with businesses, professionals, entrepreneurs, community agencies, and in all cases, difference makers. Now, let's get started with Sweet Talk. Hello, everyone. This is Jason Batalden, the Assistant Director at Continue Education Workforce Training. I'm uh, saying thank you for tuning in to our podcast, Sweet Talk. Uh, as always, we got our wonderful uh, video, audio instructor, uh, excellent, fantastic guy. Make sure we always do good content and quality. Paul. Lots of adjectives there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, the truth is, Paul, without you, I'm not sure this show makes it on the air. So I don't want you, I don't ever want you going away. I don't ever. And we have a guest today. Uh, our guest is Josh Schultz, and I'm going to toss it over to him to kind of introduce himself here in a minute and why he's on the show today or what he's bringing to the show today. But with that, we got to remind all our listeners, we got to start the show. We start, normally we start the show, and that is with the official welcome. And with that, that means we've got 20 minutes to get this episode done. And uh, as always, that's a target. And sometimes we're good at hitting that target. And most of the time, we're not. Sometimes? <laughs> no, not even really. But we try. Hey, Josh, uh, thanks for being on the show today. Uh, tell us uh, a little bit about yourself and, uh, and, and give a little plug, because I do know that uh, you will, you, you're, you're going to be teaching a class for us here this fall. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks again for uh, for having me on your guys' show. I, I appreciate it. It's definitely an honor. Um, well, my name is Josh Schultz. Uh, as you mentioned, I've uh, I've been in the self defense, martial arts, fighting, combat industry for over 20 years. Um, I have taught thousands of different martial arts self defense courses. Um, I'm a Krav Maga uh, black belt through Krav Maga Worldwide. I'm also a force training force training instructor through Krav Maga Worldwide's force training division based out of Los Angeles. Um, I've helped train a number of law enforcement agencies and security details. Um, I also hold a six degree black belt uh, in Taekwondo and uh, I've been running my studio here ferocity martial arts uh, since 2006. Um, so uh, I also have certifications in violence prevention and awareness um, through uh, Boise State University. So uh, my my realm, if you will, is all about it's all about people's safety um, as well as dispelling a lot of people's myths they have towards towards you know violence and conflict um and then prepping them with proper knowledge uh so that they can better prevent it and or repel it very cool and and with that being said you're teaching a class for us in november correct correct yes and it's a personal safety class so is it going to be a martial arts class or are you teaching techniques there or what, what, what no the... so um so most people, when they think of, you know, they think of like self-defense, things that come to mind are things like pepper spray or a gun or martial art techniques, how to, how to do this or how to do that. And the, the, reason why I've, the reason why the course is called personal safety, uh, personal safety skills uh, specifically, is the skills that we're going to give you is more about kind of understanding violence, understanding the types of violence that exist, um, how, you can, how you can mitigate it or deescalate it, prevent it, um, and just kind of understanding a lot of the mental skills um, and things that you can do in your own life. So for one, not to not be targeted as a victim. Uh, and then of course, what to do if you are. And I have found in my, in my experience, it's a lot of times it matters less of what techniques you actually do, but more of your mindset and your willingness to be able to apply it. Um, and, and this course will kind of help, help get you on that path to get there. Very cool. So 20 years experience um, teaching I, okay, you haven't used the word, is it self-defense? I want to use the right word. I don't want it. Is it 12 self-defense or personal safety or what, what, what is it? I mean, all these uh, different, you know, um, techniques and, and disciplines and all those are, are for the purpose of keeping yourself safe and keeping how to help others keep themselves safe. Is that, is that what the 
am I, am I, I'm stumbling here because I don't want to use the wrong words. No, you're, you're quite all right. It's, it's, it's definitely hard to, to piece the right word. I mean, I mean, self-defense is what you could call it. The, the challenge that I have with saying self-defense is you know, most, it's usually when you think of self-defense, it's usually that last, my last resort. I have to start punching or elbowing or, or shooting or tasering or pepper spraying. And my, my goal with this, this specific course is to get all the skills necessary before it comes to that. Okay. I mean, I mean, we'll, we'll, I mean, we'll cover kind of the mental aspect of if you get into that, but a lot of it is just developing those traits. Okay. So is it kind of like honing your spider sense? <laughs> oh, oh, nice call. Uh, yeah, I guess you could say that, sure. So kind of, kind of the goal with the course, um, I kind of have like a three-pronged um, focus uh, that we try to develop. Um, you know, awareness, you know, so you're thinking about like your spider sense, you know, a, a sense of awareness, you know, we kind of discuss that. And a lot of, a lot of self-defense instructors talk about, you got to pay attention to, to your surroundings, got to look around you. But what does that even mean? What are you looking for? How do you even, how do you develop or cultivate that skill? Um, that, that's kind of something that we'll, we'll cover and we'll address. Um, okay. you know, we'll, we'll talk about your presence, like, like your, your very confidence, your self-esteem and how you feel about yourself and your sense of self-worth, um, how that, how that contributes. Cause it's a huge contributor, uh, in prevention as well as getting yourself out of, out of the situation. So making yourself not look like a victim. Right. Right. Absolutely. Um, and then, and then of course we'll cover mindset, you know, we'll cover how, how your mindset and how you approach life, how you approach problems, how, how this, you can also apply in, into your personal safety, you know, whether it be in the moment or whether it be in that, that prevention aspect. Very cool. So that's kind of the three prong approach, uh, that we look at as far as what skills and traits we're trying to, to develop in people to help them one, stay safer. And two, I mean, when, when you live with less fear, you're, you're much happier. And so, yeah. and that's, and that's kind of the other, the other goal of, of this specific class. Right on. Do you think, Josh, do you find people that come to you for classes like this that uh, um, have historically lived in fear and, you know, and they, they, they kind of have that sense of, uh, um, I don't know, impending doom where in uh, a lot of situations that they put themselves in? Yeah. So, um, so I've obviously, I've trained with people from all walks of life. I mean, I've trained children to security professionals, uh, to soccer moms. And I, I found the, as far as like the, the civilian based training that I do, most people are, they have a sense of fear, like, Hey, I'm so worried that something's going to happen to me. And I, I'd like to know what to do just in case kind of a thing. Or I've had people who have been victimized, you know, who have been, who have suffered violence. Um, you know, whether that be within domestic relationships or whether they've been stalked um, or, or raped or sexually assaulted. Um, so, and a lot of times getting that information kind of helps them get their, their power back, you know, there to kind of overcome some of that vulnerability and that, that victimization of, I can't do anything. Like I'm at the whim of whatever attacker wants to do and kind of being able to give them these skills. Like I said, it's to set them on a path. I don't want anyone to think that my class is a, a quick fix. Cause I don't, there's, I don't believe there's anything such thing as a quick fix when it comes to your safety. Um, I, I feel like it's always time. It's an investment. And I feel like this course will help help people set that on that path or on that journey to to get them there okay. so josh kind of backing up then a little bit this is i mean you've got 12 or 20 years experience doing this sort of thing right so this is this is you i mean this is you know you don't do this just for a paycheck or you don't do this just because you got nothing else better to do you have i can sense this kind of passion or at least a, uh, about this issue how, where does that come from? I mean, how did you get started on this road? So, um, my, you know, everybody has a past, everybody has a history. Yeah. You know, we've, we've all, we've all been witness to things. We've all suffered things. Um, you know, we've, we've all suffered. And it's one of the things why I feel it's always important to be kind to everybody. Cause you never know, you never know what battle they're fighting behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I, myself have, I've been, I'm, when I was younger, one of, one of my, I mean, I was in fights quite a bit in school. One of the reasons why I started doing martial arts was I wanted to get, wanted to get better and not get my butt kicked. <laughs> right. And, um, right, right, no, that's legit. You know, yeah. and um, granted, I got a whole lot more um, than that. I got way more than I ever bargained for. And, um, but I've, I've seen enough people in my life um, who have been victimized. You know, I've, I've had friends who've been, who've been assaulted, been raped. Um, you know, I've had, I've had family members 
um, who have um, who have suffered um, from from sexual abuse, and um, that's that's definitely contributed uh, to my passion because I know I know how damaging it can be to to suffer that, and and how a lot of times you suffer silently, and you you feel helpless, you feel like you should have done something better, uh, I should have made this decision, I should have fought back. Um, you know, there's always the what ifs we play, but I came to an understanding that you survived. You made it out to the other oh, side. Right. You made it right. through the gauntlet. And that contributes to my passion in wanting to bring that to other people because I've seen, I've seen the light and the life that comes back to somebody who's been, who's been victimized. And right. she gains that, that, that knowledge of, hey, you know what? I made it. I am a survivor. I'm going to be better. I'm going to be stronger and I'm going to learn from this and I'm going to pass it on. I've seen the quality of life improved. I, um, right. I, I had one such gal, actually, she, um, she attended, a, she attended a college and, um, she was, uh, she was date raped and we started, we started working together and it took her a lot of courage to come in and she never, she never Absolutely. told me of her experience. Um, but she was suicidal. She didn't know who to turn to. Um, you know, I remember, I remember her coming in and having cuts on her arms and oh, but yeah. tremendous amount of bravery in her to to be willing to try to learn something right you know, to be willing to, to still step out that side her comfort zone it just it just shows how much strength she had right. and i think well, once once she realized that I mean, her life changed and right. i mean she's happily married now she has two kids um it's uh, it's wonderful to, to see that right. change. Well, you know, and I think that you, you touched on that point earlier is that that survivor, right? That um, when you survive a trauma, whatever, whatever it be, right? Um, there is you, there's probably that initial, for, you know, experience or thought or feeling that, you know, how dumb was I? How helpless was I? How dare did I let myself get in that situation or in that environment? Or didn't I see this coming or those? And so there's that self guilt bashing. Yeah. And the, and the flip side of that coin is you survive. You understand uh, the strength that it takes um, to be where you're at now, to have endured that and to be here and to then capitalize on that strength and not necessarily dwell on um, the circumstances or the events that led up to the trauma. I mean, because sometimes we all live in a world where trauma happens, right? Whether it's, you know, I mean, I always, I. I kind of joke with my wife a little bit. I, uh, I get on a bicycle, uh, you know, and, and uh, I'm no, I, I do not count myself like a bicycle guy or whatever, but for me, riding a bicycle every morning, you know, for about 30 minutes, at least keeps the heart pumping and, and, uh, and I don't, that type of thing. But when I go outside and do it, you know, she says, where's that helmet? And I keep thinking, well, you know, how stupid do I look with that helmet? But, uh, you know, I, I, I used to ride a motorcycle too. And I used to say, uh, I didn't want to wear a helmet motorcycle riding because if I got an accident, I didn't want the long expensive recovery. <laughs> but on a bicycle, I don't go fast enough. So I better wear the helmet because I don't want the long expensive recovery. You know, I'm not going to go fast enough on my bike to kill me. I'm going to go fast enough on my bike to be in a hospital for six weeks. You know, <laughs> so I, the bad story, I suppose people are. <laughs> well, so I, but, I think what but my point is, is that preventative. No, yeah. So I wear my helmet and, and I don't mean to minimize uh, your, 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 the, the example you gave her experience, but it just struck out that, yeah, we, we, we do what we can to be safe, but we can't avoid trauma. We just, we're, we can't escape it. That's the world we live in. Right. So how do we deal with it? So working with civilians, working with law enforcement, working with uh, training, um, is there a crossover? Uh, I imagine a lot of the same kind of principles apply, right? To law, law enforcement as they do to civilians, how to de-escalate, right. how to avoid conflict. Right. A lot. Of, and of course, a lot of it, there's a lot of crossover. The biggest thing is what's, what's your end game? What's, what is the goal you're fighting for? Right. So, mm -hmm. so like with, um, well, with like, uh, like security personnel or, or law enforcement, it's, it's usually to, to get whatever your job is, get it done. Whether it's, you know, whether it's arresting a, a subject, you know, safely or, you know, deescalating the situation, you know, whatever your end game goal is. And, safety is usually the, the, the paramount of that. How do I do all that safely to me and to the person? And with, with civilian-based training, it's, it's all about your safety. How do I keep myself safe? 
How do I keep my loved ones safe so that I can, I can stay out of these situations? Um, granted, sometimes we can't stay out of them all. Sometimes, you know, despite our best efforts, we've we, push comes to shove. We got to do what we got to do to keep ourselves safe. And the, all the skills will still apply. Or at least I should say that the mindset, the, the skills that I'm referring to are the, that three pronged um, mindset that we're trying to create that mindset, that awareness, that presence, um, all those things help you accomplish whatever that goal might be. So that, that's, where, that's where a lot of that crossover will, uh, will come, come from as far as those skills. So I'm tempted to go down this road, Josh. So if it's inappropriate, you tell me to leave it alone. And Paul, we may have to edit our first podcast. Oh, shoot. <laughs> oh dear. Well, I mean, let's talk about it. Let's talk about law enforcement and the use of force, right? I mean, that's an issue. That's, I, I'm not passing judgment. I'm just saying in today's current society, right, that's on, that's on our news. I mean, we're hearing that all the time. Right. Um, and I guess what I was encouraged to hear a little bit was, you know, that, that safety in this training, and, and I'm probably stepping away from the class a little bit. I'm going more to your professional experience is it's safety for both parties involved. I mean, that's always been the priority. Right. right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Um, and with, with that safety, of course, um, training, training is paramount and something that I found in, in, in my, uh, in my 10 years of law enforcement experience from my pat, my, uh, my previous law enforcement experience, um, I found the more confident I was in my, my ability to perform. So like one understanding the laws is important. And then two, being confident in the, the skills, the skill set I had to be able to, to control or arrest somebody. If I, if I had that confidence in, in my ability and my skills and the knowledge of the law, I found I, I would react quicker and without hesitation and confrontation ended way quicker. Way quicker. And That's the fast, yeah, absolutely. The, the faster that you can end something, the safer everybody is. The longer, the longer a fight drags out, then the more at risk everybody is at getting hurt or killed. Um, you know, which is why one of the, one of the things when I'm teaching is it, is it more humane to break someone's nose or to shoot them? It's always more humane to punch someone in the face than it is to shoot them. Right. 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 I mean, right. It's, yes. Right? Yes. I don't yeah. want to, I no, I don't want to get punched in the nose, but yeah, if I have to pick that punch me in the nose. Yeah. If you have the choice, I mean, <laughs> right. I mean, so I can either, you know, punch you in the face and end the fight really quick or it drags out and it drags out and I'm trying a whole bunch of stuff that's ineffective and not working and until eventually it escalates to a point that we wish I hadn't gotten to. Right. And so when, you know, and like I said, like, like you mentioned, the, the police thing is a big, is a big discussion right now. And I, I can tell you police need, I can tell you police need more hands-on physical training. It's, and, and that's something that, that is lacked. And there are many departments that recognize the need. The, the challenge is, um, sometimes, so, so the training that I teach specifically is, is Krav Maga. Krav Maga is an right. Israel self-defense system. Um, and it was originally designed to make men, women, and children to be combat effective within a two week time frame. Um, and because of it, it's, it's very aggressive. I mean, it's, it's punching, kicking, elbowing, and knee striking like crazy until you neutralize the threat as quickly as you can. Now, a lot of departments haven't wanted to adapt it because it looks too aggressive, right? So they're like, no, we, want to, we don't wanna do anything aggressive. You know, we wanna have a softer hands approach, which is understandable. But here's the downside. Well, what are you teaching in its stead? Mm -hmm. to, um, but when you can end things quicker, quicker and more aggressively, the shorter the fight is, the right. less likely people are to get hurt. Matter of fact, um, LA, uh, LA County Sheriff's Office um, teaches Krav Maga, and they actually have for years. Um, when they first started implementing it into their, their defensive tactics training, they had almost a 60% drop in uh, police brutality complaints and other liability issues because sure. now they are ending things quicker. Sure. So we're, we're ineffective training, ineffective, ineffective force looks or has the appearance of excessive force. Effective force doesn't have that appearance. <laughs> but but we're anyway. also talking about that line when uh, force is deemed to be necessary, correct? Right. 
Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I'm not just saying that we just, we just teach yeah. cops to go out and break yeah, some exactly. skulls and take people <laughs> down. No, absolutely not. And that, and the thing is, is, is understanding that there's, there's a group of skills that have to be developed. Um, you know, the, the understanding, that's, that's why I mentioned our course, we'll talk about the different types of violence. Like right. there's, there's, there's different that's kinds still, of yeah. violence. There's different kinds of violence. Us as men will experience that women won't and there's things that women experience that we as men w don't or understand yeah let's can we talk about that for a minute the, the word yeah. yeah flesh that out a little bit for me if you don't mind a little bit the different kinds of violence and that's a great con with paul i'm just saying paul and i were talking a little bit about this before you got on and that was the quiet conversation we had is uh you know paul was sharing a story and i i don't want to step on your toes Paul. but no 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 you know with your 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 friends who are women they always feel more vulnerable, vulnerable uh, in, in, in different it's, situations. Yeah, yeah. In situations that a yeah. guy normally doesn't even blink at, they actually have this um, hyper sense awareness that they're um, vulnerable to a uh, particular uh, possible attack or something else. Right. Absolutely. So, um, so with that, when it comes to the types of violence, so you have what we call social violence and asocial violence or predatorial violence. So social violence <laughs> is all about social structure. It's about violence that, that raises us up in the hierarchy of social ladders, which is, which is a predominantly male problem. I mean, you know, perfect example are those two jerks at the bar bumping chests and shoving each other around, trying to prove who's bigger, badder, and tougher. Two right. roosters <laughs> fighting for the hen house. <laughs> yeah, there you go, right? Two, two roosters fighting for the hen house, absolutely. And it's always worse when there's a, there's a female present because they're trying to look good in front of the, the female or in front of their friends. You know, no one's willing to back down because they, they want to save face and they want that respect, right? And that's, that's what social violence is. And that, that most commonly uh, is, is a male issue because uh, right. it's all about that male ego, about stroking that, about who's bigger and badder, right? And so right. There's, there's different components that factor into play in that. And so there, there's things that you do in social violence to deescalate it, to, to, to tone it down or to be able to get out of it. And then you have asocial violence or predatorial violence. Um, and this is, this is the one most commonly affects women. Um, this is the person that wants to do what they do in secret. They don't want witnesses. They don't want recognition for it. They're, they're after some type of a reward. Now, this could be um, some type of gratification from committing the crime or, you know, it could, it could serve a resource purpose, such as like robbery, you know, trying to attain something tangible, right? And that, that's where predatorial violence is. Now, the things you do to de-escalate the one would escalate the other um, and then and vice versa, you know? So, there, so one, you kind of have to understand the context of the situation um, in order to really understand how to be able to de-escalate it or prevent it. Um, and so that's why a lot of times with, well, self-defense instructors are kind of just blanket violence and say, Here, here's your approach to it. And sometimes women have a difficult time um, understanding that because they're like, well, wait, you're a man. How do you really understand what I'm going to have to do or go through? And which, which is very valid, um, which is usually one of the reasons I have my, my female instructors run our women's self-defense courses. Oh, so you also have female instructors in your in your? Uh, oh, absolutely. Oh, I have. Excellent. I have a lot of female instructors and they're very talented and they're very skilled. They all have their different backgrounds. Um, but women can relate a lot better to a female instructor because one, my female instructors get it. And some of them have been there. And so, you know, they can relate. So when they're teaching like a skill or a concept, um, the women are like, they get it. They understand. They, they know where I'm coming from because they've been there. And for me, as, as much as my, I study, as much as I research, as, as much as I've seen things, I've, I haven't been, experienced to what women go through because one i'm not a woman and so i don't fully understand or grasp that vulnerability um and that that fear that comes from like well like here's an example when um being at home alone for right. me as a guy oh, i love it kids are out of the house my wife is out with her friends it's nice and quiet uh i love having the house to myself please don't let my wife no, right. she won't right. listen. Don't worry. No one listens to this I'll podcast let, anyway. This <laughs> you know, but but if she's home alone, like like she's she's nervous. She's scared. Like she makes sure the windows are locked. Um, you know, she hears something out in the back. It kind of freaks her out. She she'll keep a knife or something under her pillow. Um, she's she just she just has a different. It, it's different, obviously. 
And a lot of it is because for me, I, I'd be more afraid or more worried or concerned if I'm like in a bar and guys are getting drunk and throwing out slurs and stuff like this at each other. I, I would be more nervous and scared in that environment because, well, social violence or the, the content or me afraid of looking weak in front of other people sure. uh, or those kinds of things that that's kind of where my fear would come from, not from predatorial violence, because typically most commonly uh, it's not something that men experience. So that is that Josh, that, that was educational. So thank you. Uh, um, I heard the timer go off, Jason. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. It's just cause, <laughs> I know. but I, I got one last thing that I, I'd like, uh, Josh to touch on if he can. Okay. Um, so we talked about, um, social violence and predatory violence. And I think this falls under predatory violence, but it's a little different, um, domestic violence. Yeah. So that definitely falls under the, the predatorial ca category because of the, the power dynamic uh, that's involved when it comes to domestic violence. Um, and when you start talking about abusive relationships, um, it, it's a complicated, it's a complicated issue. And, and most people, when they think of self-defense, things like that, they, they think of the, the stranger in the hoodie down the dark alley when right. it's usually not that. It's somebody you know. Right. And granted, the more you know them, the more involved you are with them, the more complicated the context because, gets. Right. Exactly. So when you start talking about domestic relationships, it, it, it is typically predatorial in nature. When when a partner is abusing their partner, they're not doing it for witnesses. They're not no. doing it for recognition. They're not doing it for status. Mm -mm. Right. There's there's different reasons and motivation behind that, and they're typically predatorial in nature. So you have gotten uh, people and clients in the past that have had this issue. Is absolutely okay. All right. Absolutely. Great. All right, Josh. I want to tell you I appreciate your conversation today. Um, I appreciate you even willing to go down and kind of talk about relevant issues and provide a an interesting and I thought very relevant uh, perspective on just what we're seeing in the world today as far as, you know, just in general, right? Um, law right. enforcement, um, the other side of that. Um, this was a fascinating conversation, by the way. Yeah. I well, really I, enjoyed I, it. Again, so. I think it's something that we could go on for a much longer time. But um, yeah. Josh, if someone wanted to re reach out uh, to you, if they were yes. interested in, um, you know, joining one of your, um, uh, you know, classes at your facility, how would they reach get a hold of you? Okay, yeah, that's an excellent question. So we have, uh, we have three locations. Um, we have one here in Idaho Falls. We have one there in uh, Chubbuck, and we have one in Shelley uh, as well. Um, so to, uh, to contact us, uh, we, do have a, we do have a website uh, that you can go to um, that kind of gives you information to, uh, to contact any one of those locations, um, which also has my email address in there as well. Um, so if, if anyone has any direct questions, they're always more than welcome to ask. Um, that website... Yes. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that website is Idaho Falls Martial Arts dot com. Um, Idaho Falls Martial Arts right. com. Great. Right. So, um, and we'll link we'll link that on the yeah, on the description yeah. here too. So. And uh, we uh, we talked about the class, and do we mention the uh, day um, when it starts? Yeah, November seventh. November seventh. I think we got that one. And I want to give everyone the heads up that uh, to be sure the registration for our fall classes will open up here, and I think in another two weeks. Um, and Where do they go for that? Whoa, 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 whoa. That's right. I can't say that because we don't know for sure when your podcast is going to. I got a uh, like August 7th, I think. And we want to go to our website at www.cetrain.edu. <laughs> <laughs> you know, every, every single podcast, Jason. Every single podcast. That's C -E -train. C -E -train. C -E -train. At dot, ISU, yeah. Dot ISU dot <laughs> I, I hate my job some days. I, no good at it. I am no good at it. Josh, thank you very much for the thank conversation. You, Josh. Um, yeah, thank you so Paul, much for having thank me. Paul, thank you for being here. Uh, we really want your class to fill up because I think not just because uh, it looks good for us, but I think there's some content in there and some uh, information in there that it's valuable for everyone across the board. So absolutely thank you, Josh. We truly appreciate and again, don't forget to look us up at uh, cetrain.isu.edu. And uh, we'll catch you later. I got it right. All right. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Josh, so yeah, much. Thanks. I really appreciate the conversation. You bet. Thank you so much. Appreciate you guys having me.